Hey, Jeff back here. So, uh, nothing new this time. We're going to take a look at a uh, Impelitary band in my collection. I don't think that the band gets a whole lot of love or a whole lot of mention in the VC. And I think I kind of know why a little bit. But um, the other day, back on the 15th, uh, a fairly new channel, I need to check out The Fire Burns Within, um, he posted a video ranking the his his ranking of the 11 main impelitary uh, album releases um, so that got me thinking about the band a little more they're one of my favorite bands i pulled out my collection i started looking through things comparing things and i just thought hey let's feature these guys because yeah i've mentioned them a couple of times and they do occasionally get mentioned but um they're just i don't think they get the kind of love that they really deserve for people in the in the metal community um, I guess if you're into metal and you're into this type of metal, you probably know them. But I just don't think they're as well known. And I, you can kind of see why. We'll get into that in a minute, though. So, Impelitary. Chris Impelitary is a, uh, if you've listened to him for any amount of years, he's just, he's labeled as one of the fastest guitar players around. He's just, you know, but it's tasteful. It's not like he's, you know, you got people like Malmsteen. Who, is, who are amazing guitar players, just all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but in some ways, bands like that, guitar players like that, can get kind of, after a while, it starts all sounding the same. You get kind of, I don't know, tired of it. Sometimes it becomes monotonous. It depends on their style. And uh, anyway, Impelitary is a super fast shredder at times, but pulls it off well i've never had an issue with any two albums or any album at all or anything by him where i'm like oh here he goes again same old you know he's got the same old runs or something there's not things like that he's just always been solid and the thing is i look back and n most all of his albums are not even in america they've never had a u.s release so i think that's got a lot to do even though he's a u.s you know u.s band um like none of his stuff has been released in America, except for the I'll, I'll point that out. But it so it's kind of sad. I don't think you you don't find them as easy. You have to get them as imports. Um, and, and and that never hit me over the years because I guess somehow with the albums that have come out, I bought them. But you know, probably through Amazon and stuff. They're you're they're available. I'm just surprised. I look back at all of the releases on Discogs and I'm like, none of them have a U.S. release. So yeah, you'd have to kind of go out and find them. Um, it seems like that would make them a little harder to find. Um, hugely popular overseas, hugely popular in like Japan and stuff. But then again, they've always had great taste in metal and stuff. So, so let's just jump into it. There's quite a few releases here. I'm going to look at everything I've got. I've got everything except I think one release. Um, but all of them, most all of them, are on cassette. Because I mean, cassette. Yeah, cassette. All most all of them are on CD because. The few that were released on vinyl, again, overseas, hard to find, and aside from the latest ones. Um, and most of these are going to be in the 90s and, you know, 2000s when vinyl was kind of out. So, it started with the first EP just called Impelitary. It's four songs. Chris, and then so they got this singer here, Rob Rock. Now, this would have been 1987. Rob Rock was kind of not a household name. I mean, he may not be so much now. He is in my world, but... Um, Project Mars, you know, with Tommy Aldridge and Rudy Sarzo and Tony McAlpine um, and Rob Rock. They did an album. Then he's over here. And this was uh, on Relativity Records. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Relativity Records is the same label that Satriani was on. So, you know, they know it's kind of guitar-oriented. But this is kind of just a straightforward, hard rocking album. He didn't have a ton of shreddage and stuff like that on here. It's an EP. This came out in America. This was, you know, fairly well known. Um, I don't know how well it did, but, you know, again, the U.S. market. Then you turn around the next year, 87, 88, his first full-length album. And here we got some big-name hitters. So you've got Chris and Pelletier on guitar. You've got Graham Bonnet on vocals now he's known for rainbow and he's done a lot of projects over the years and honestly i've never been a huge fan of graham bonnet's vocals um he sang on a michael shanker album i consider that my weakest michael shanker album 
Um, he was okay with Rainbow. You know, I, I, he just never quite appealed with me for all of these years. So, this to me is like the weakest Impelitary album. It's straightforward. Uh, it's not really shredding. There are some, you know, upbeat tunes. It's just good hard rock. Got some keyboards laced in there. Um, I mean, it's it's going to be borderline metal at times, but for the most part, it's just solid hard rock. It's got Chuck Wright on bass. He, you know, did a stint with Quiet Riot. He's labeled as there. Um, and a guy from Ted Nugent, uh, Pat Turney. Anyway, so it's got some, you know, name people on here. It's a good album. It's a solid album. Um, but when it comes to the overall impelitary sound and style and the fact that Grand Bonnet's on it, it's not one of my favorites. That one I do have on vinyl. Again, another U.S. release. So this one is fairly easy to get your hands on. Um, so I picked it up on vinyl because, you know, I love impelitary. All right, so then you go and, you you know, you, you've done that and it's... It, it, that album supposedly did really well in Japan, and so they did a big tour over there, and that's kind of started when they started getting really huge over there, and, and so that was in 88. Then you kind of have a gap, and then Chris comes back in 1992 with Grin and Barrett. Now, this is, an, again, only released overseas. Back are Rob Rock on vocals from the first EP, so he's back on here, and then... Um, I don't know if this was the album when it starts, but you start getting in my, some of my favorite musicians are getting involved. Uh, I don't know if this was if on this one, but uh, Ken Mary on drums comes in in the next album or two uh, for sure. And see, it's kind of hard because these are like Japanese releases, so everything's in Japanese. And then you well, you do have a mixture. Yeah, Ken Mary is on drums here. So now on this album, this is going to be when I say this was this was eighty uh, ninety two. This is going to have that early 90s, late 80s uh, metal sound. The sound that bands were doing at that time. The bands who were still holding on to the 80s, but progressing into the early 90s. So this is a solid, it doesn't have a, not a lot of fast, not a lot of shred, but just a solid metal album of, uh, well, early 90s type style of bands that were doing it at that time. So this is just a great album for that style. All right, so then a year later, in 93, they come out with an EP called Victim of the System. Again, you've got uh, Ken Mary on drums, one of my favorite drummers. You've got Chris. You've got Rob Rock. Uh, it's a five-song thing. Now, this one also has a song in here called The Young and the Ruthless. Now, it mentions on the album that um, background vocals and stuff are done by Ken Tamplin. Now, Ken Tamplin, we've mentioned recently in my videos, because like, his band Shout has been reissued on vinyl recently. Uh, Magdalene is a band he was with with Delaney Cordola. It was released on vinyl recently. Uh, the first Angelica album was released on vinyl and CD again released recently. This was from 80, late 80s, 89. This is like one of the first major appearances of Rob Rock on what would be considered a Christian release. And this was produced and even has a song on here by Ken Tamplin. Now, Ken Tamplin had been in Joshua back in like 85-ish. And then when he left Joshua in 86, Rob Rock came in on vocals. Ken Tamplin was a guitar player. So they, their paths kind of crossed there for a time frame where when Rob came in and Ken hadn't left, I understand they were together for just a brief, or maybe they weren't together. It was a brief amount of time they might have met. Then he did the Angelic album, Ken Calls and Rob, to do the vocals just a guest vocal spot he wasn't in the band um and then so here he pops up ken tamplin working again with rob and you hear this the distinctive ken tamplin vocals on the young and the restless uh ruthless the young and the ruthless again this is another solid uh late 80s early 90s style metal nothing super flashy but you can sort of sort of see he's coming you can sort of see the speed the the energy picking up a little more um and so this is a five song EP that came out. Now this particular version I got was from South Korea, so it has seven songs. The last two tracks are bonus tracks, but they are just basically two tracks from Grin and Barrett. So, um, but you know, kind of neat. Again, imports because they're not available over here. Now, jump forward to 1994, next year, you got the, another full release. Now this 
is where, in my opinion, the band really starts coming to their own. Answer to the Master. This is where you start seeing the speed coming in. You start seeing the solid riffing, the 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 the, uh, the power metal feel. It's 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 progressing past that late '80s, early '90s feel, and it starts becoming uh, symphonic. Uh, uh, pr that progressive sound, not like prog rock, but progressive, like you hear metal bands, where it's just again you start getting a little of that shred this is where um, I think I discovered them is around this time this is one of my favorite albums it's got some of the best songs now you see uh, fly away warrior is a song that Rob Rock has done numerous times because he did it on a demo back in the 90 in 1990 under driver name and he redid it for the album driver that when they finally put an album out a handful of years ago so it's been and I think he even did one of his solo albums it's one of his songs that has gone with him but it's on here um and you've just got some of the best songs some of my most memorable songs on here and again i believe we still have like ken mary on drums it's just it's an all-star it's just a, a phenomenal band um so this is where in my opinion they really established their sound where i would say yes i could pick that out that's impelitary but it's on this album, <sighs> Screaming Symphony. This is 96. And this is, in my opinion, probably where the high watermark. This is just, everything about this album, in my opinion, is just near perfect. You got everything you had on Answer to the Master, but tenfold and everything it's just the perfect blend of of speed the perfect blend of uh the, the progressive elements of of just the riffage and everything the, the vocals the songs this album still stands to me as the high water mark it's kind of tough to say that though because almost every album after this just gets better um, but to me this is where it started answer to the master was like we're here Screaming Symphony is like we've taken it all the way. This is just amazing. Father, forgive them. I'll I'll be with you. you know Kingdom of Light. Now I will mention this, and 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 uh, Fireburns would then mention this too. Now people label them a Christian band. I'm not sure Impelitary would really fit that category, and and I'll tell you why. Rob Rock is a Christian. He's been known to be, you know, he sings Christian bands. He's been in Christian bands. He's been in a lot of non-Christian bands, too. He's done a lot of writing. It's just, it's not like he sings in satanic bands, but he sings, you know, just what would be considered not pro-Christian. I mean, as a Christian, when you, this has always been the argument. Are they Christians? Is it a Christian band? Are they Christians in a band? I think Impelitary would fall into the Christians in a band aspect because Impelitary, the lyrics will change with the singers. He had Graham Bonnet on vocals. There's no Christian lyrics on the Graham Bonnet release. Um, not every song that Rob Rock writes is, you know, a Christian song. But you got songs like Father Forgive Them, Kingdom of Light. Uh, but then you've got all these other songs that are not like that. So it's kind of a mix. Yes, Rob Rock does write spiritual based lyrics. And yes, they do appear on the albums often, but not every song. So you're not getting preached to. There are some religious based things. This album, Answer to the Master, you know, you've got this demon guy. This is a famous painting, but you got this, you know, demon talking to like a priest guy. And so it's got that in there. Um, Warrior, Fly Away. I mean, these are all religious sound, Answer to the Master. They're religious sounding type songs. But in Chris and Pelletary, I guess Chris himself claims to be a fellow, you know, a believer. I have seen on uh, the albums where he thanks the Lord. But I don't think the band overall is out for ministry they're not a christian ministry band so i don't know it's one of those fine lines i don't think a non-christian is going to be offended by listening to impelitary uh, because even as you know uh the fire burns within said they're not preaching they do have spiritual lyrics occasionally so don't get turned turn, turned off by that um this is just a live album fast live and loud uh kind of a bootleg japan 90 95 and 96 so not really an official release, but something you pick up along the way. 
Now, it was funny. So this was the number one ranking on the Fire Burns within, um, on his channel. And I admit, I had the Hurricane. Um, and it's kind of hard here with the light. It's kind of got a cool... It's got one of those uh, Gustav Dore, Dore or whatever artist's uh, wood carvings. Kind of hard to see. Battle, battling Angels. Again, there are, you know, religious lyrics on here uh, of the type. I had the Hurricane, Shed Your Blood. Very, very much a Christian thing. Race Into the Light. So, we have Screaming Symphony, which I think is probably the most perfect album. And it just gets better, I admit. I mean, he's, you know, on, on his channel, he was saying this is his favorite album. Uh, it, 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 it intensifies. Screaming Symphony, it, this intensifies. The speed, the melodic, uh, the, the melodies, the songs. It's just another, this is the era where you just, he can do no wrong, in my opinion. It's just... An amazing release. So I would say, if you can get your hand on Screaming Symphony, start there. If you can get your hands on this, start here. I mean, these are these are pivotal albums, and almost every album from here on out is is like this. But I think these two are really where you find your way. Now, interesting, and I pointed this out to him on his video on his version of this because there are a couple versions. Um, he has one that says includes the EP "Victim of the System." <laughs> now, here's "Victim of the System." The songs that they list on here for Victim of the System on his version when I looked it up are two songs from the CP and three songs from Answer to the Master. So it's not the actual Victim of the System EP. That would have been cool because this again, hard to find in America. It would have been cool if they had put it on there. But they put songs from both of these, you know, that and Answer to the Master. So you got two different, it's just odd. I don't, I don't know who labeled it that way, why they let It's great to have those five songs, because if you don't have those albums, great. But um, I don't have that version. I have, you know, when it first came out, I have the original. Then it was re-released later with the second CD. Now what I do have is a an EP that came out at the same time. So you've got the song on here. Uh, which song was it? This was uh, Fuel for the Fire was the third track on here and I guess it was released as a single so this is the fuel for the fire single but also on here you've got three other songs so I had to buy this because it's got like three non-album tracks on here um, you've got stand or fall okay two because paradise is on here so two additional tracks fuel for the fire and paradise are from that album but then you've also got stand or fall and the light is blind tears in the eyes of the world so as a completist, I had to buy that because, you know, I want to have all their songs. So yes, there's an EP there. It's, well, it's more of a single. It's a glorified maxi single. All right, step up next. You have Crunch. Now, I think I, I think this is the one you you can see where the, they, they have combos out there where you get these two albums on one. Um, I think I've seen that before. But Crunch was put out. Um, when was Crunch? This is the... 2000 release i the hurricane was 97 so we got a couple years we got crunch it's back raw rock on vocals the musicianship on these albums are just unbelievable just uh, unbelievable just melodic power metal just some of the best stuff um crunch is another one this is uh i think it, it, it comes down just a hair at times from the speed and you've got a lot more crunch that's the name um but again overall i don't have a complaint about that album at all then, and I don't know the whole story, and you know what, maybe I should get Rob Brock on here and talk about it, though I don't want to bring up any bad blood or whatever, it may not have been bad blood, timing, Rob was doing solo albums, he might have been on tour, whatever, Chris comes back in 2004, I'm sorry, see that, see I'm skipping one, because the one that I'm missing, so here we go, we got Crunch in 2000, in 2002, he brings back Graham Bonnet, again from the first full album again the guy from rainbow um he's done a lot of other things um and graham bonnet, bonnet comes back now the first album with him stand in line had a little bit of heavy edge to it but for the most part was a uh kind of a keyboard hard rock album system x you're thinking okay graham bonnet's back he doesn't have the vocal style that's really metal but i'm telling you what system x is a kick butt album it's got a lot of the power um a little more a little less of the super speed and a lot of heavy aggression uh guitars but graham fits right in it, it it's actually at that point as when i started rethinking my 
sort of dislike of Graham Bonnet because he does really well. Um, it's a different style than Rob Rock, and it's a different feel. But uh, System X is a great album. Now, I never bought it because I didn't like Graham Bonnet. Now, years later, I mean, I have it digitally. Years later, when I listen to it and I appreciate it, I want it. It's hard to find because, again, only available overseas, and it's kind of expensive for a CD. So I'll stick with the digital for now. But it's a good album. It's different. 2002 System X. 2004, he comes back with Pedal to the Metal. Again, a different singer. This is pretty much a guy who I don't believe did anything uh, at that time. Great sounding album. Uh, you know, but if you're really used to Rob Rock, it's different. But uh, it's just a good, this is a great metal album. A little less of the progressive shredding. He still has some of that, but it, it almost becomes more like the modern metal sound without becoming a modern metal sound. The vocalist kills, though, and it's great. But again, System X and Pedal to the Metal, you don't find the religious lyrics that you find with Rob because these guys are singing. It's not like Impelitary is going out of their way to become a Christian band. Um, and actually, you find songs that are not going to be, you know, uh, necessarily something Christians per se are going to be favorable of. You know, it's just they're a little rough around the edges. Solid album. It's not like it's, you know, that bad, but look at the imagery and all that, you know weird stuff great album great album regardless of the singer chris puts out stellar stuff so then you got 2004 you got a big gap of time 2009 finally chris comes back and he's like it's time to do another album yes rob rock is back and so out comes wicked maiden now this particular one is signed by rob rock because i believe it because you can't even get these albums in the country very easily i think i probably bought this from rob himself now this is this was a great comeback. It's got it is it is fast. It's furious. It's got the speed. It's got the Rob Rock. The only song on this there's one song that stands out on this album that kind of makes bleh, makes me go poo poo, and that's High School Revolution. It's just I don't know what that was about. It's just it doesn't fit, <laughs> and I never really liked that. So when I think of this album, it's it's got a, a, a slight stain, <laughs> but overall it's a great album. I mean when when we first pl pulled that in. And just he was back with the the speed and the and the riffing and the, you know the shredding sound. It was just it was amazing. So all right, then we jump forward. Big gap of time, 2015. Six years later. Hey, let's come back and uh, you know again with Rob Rock. This one was on vinyl because again the vinyl age has come. Uh, Venom. I do have it on CD because I guess I bought it on CD before they put the vinyl out. Or maybe I got it before I could get the vinyl. Um, so again, you know, another Rob Rock classic. It's just great. And then they didn't wait too much long after that 2018 Nature of the Beast. Um, and yeah, so you've got the same stuff. These two albums are very, you know, very much in the same vein. Very much uh, just the, the, the shredding fast leads. Uh, very melodic. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there from these two albums, so you can easily get a taste of them. They did a lot of, uh, pretty much look like the same photo shoot, the same place they set up. Um, and yeah, so there are, you know, and again, as you know, as mentioned, they do have some, again, not all of them, but some lyrics on here like Jehovah and stuff like that. Uh, Venom is, you know, uh, sort of against the evil and stuff like that. But for the most part, you know, again, they're not preachy, but they do have spiritual lyrics. These are the most two releases they are available on vinyl and are, are pretty easy to find um so that's my run through of everything i have in Pelletary. if you haven't checked them out and you like metal check them out if you can get your hands on them they're not as easy to find as i wish uh, check them out on youtube tons of videos uh you'll get a good taste for them this is just in Pelletary, and if you haven't heard them and you're a metal fan you have to check them out they are great Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Rock on. See you later.